In today's episode of my small account challenge, I'm gonna give up the reins and I'm gonna let AI give me the strategy that I will use in an attempt to grow my small account. Now my account has been reset back to a thousand bucks because we crossed over 10,000 new subscribers on this channel. So I wanna thank you for hitting that subscribe button and hitting the thumbs up. And now we are gonna jump in to trade number one of my small account challenge with a thousand bucks controlled by AI. So I've already set up my script so that each trade will use 90% of my available buying power. This AI strategy only calls for taking one trade at a time. Now I want you to understand just because I'm using 90% of my account in one trade doesn't mean I'm risking 90% of my account in that trade. That would only be true if I was going to hold a stock until it went to zero. But this AI strategy has a predetermined max drawdown for each trade, which I'll share with you in a minute. So QNRX is the stock that I'm looking at. It's currently up over 100%. It has news. And the AI strategy says that this is the right stock to trade. So you can see right now I am in at $6.05. This is my first trade. The chart looks good. The stock is moving up. I'm currently up on the position. It hit a high there of about $6.30, which is almost 5% in less than two minutes, less than a minute even. As I look at this stock right now, my gut was that I should have already sold. But the AI strategy said, no, don't sell it yet. So I'm like, okay, well, I, I got to put my got to put my faith in this and let's see what happens with this trade. This is the first trade. This is proof of concept. The stock has over 5 million shares of volume. Now there's 28, there's 29. And now my position is out. It looks like I'm still holding 223 shares, which means I sold about 600 shares at 628 and 622, locking up a realized profit of $140.26. Interesting. It looks like the rest of the trade is now coming back towards break even as it comes back down to 610 on the bid 605 on the bid that's break even and i'm out the rest first trade 140 dollars and 26 cents in the bank now i'm sure you've got a million questions you're thinking ross what is the ai strategy what's the trigger to buy the trigger to sell how did qnrx become the stock that was worth trading so today was day one of letting ai take the reins but before day one, I had to actually go and do the research of putting together the strategy. So now let's take a step back and let's go through the process of me showing you how I developed this AI strategy. So I'm gonna use the artificial intelligence of ChatGPT to help me develop a strategy that I can use for this challenge. But before we do that, let's ask ChatGPT a couple of really simple questions just to make sure it even knows a thing or two about trading. Who is the most handsome day trader whose name rhymes with hoss or maybe boss? Yes, that is correct. I am referring to Ross Cameron. All right, all right. ChatGPT seems to know what it's talking about. I think I can trust it to develop a trading strategy for me. Please write a day trading strategy with rules to capitalize on fast moving stocks. Okay, so this looks like a good starting point. It's simple, but um, and it does leave room for interpretation. But the idea is um, in, let's see, five steps, five steps. Step one, pre-market prep. So analyze pre-market conditions to identify potential fast-moving stocks. Look for stocks with significant pre-market volume and news that could drive the price movements, such as earnings, reports, mergers, acquisitions, or other corporate events. That's fine. That that i can do that makes sense create a watch list of three to five stocks that show potential for significant intraday movements okay so i could do that each morning pre-market then entry rules right this is what i really need where am i going to buy and sell breakout breakdown on volume enter a trade when a stock breaks out above a resistance level or breaks below a support level on higher than average volume this indicates a strong buying or selling interest. Okay. Moving averages used moving averages of the 9 and the 20 EMA, which I already use, for trend confirmation. Consider entering a trade when the price moves above a short-term moving average in an uptrend or below in a downtrend. Okay, so I can understand that. Relative strength index. Look for stocks that are not oversold or overbought. 
RSI should not be above 80 or 70 or below 30 to avoid false signals. Okay. Exit rules. Set a profit target for each trade based on the stock's volatility and recent price range. See, this leaves a lot of room for interpretation. A common approach is to aim for a profit of 1% to 2% for highly volatile stocks. Hmm. What does it say about risk management? Position size and determine your position size based on your account tolerance. A common rule is to risk no more than 1% to 2% of your trading account on a single trade. All right, so... 2% of my trading account would be 20 bucks. So for the small account challenge, this is telling me not to risk more than $20 on any trade. Okay, so I've condensed this down into the AI breakout strategy. Number one, I'm gonna trade the most volatile and liquid stocks each day. And I'm gonna make a, lo a watch list each day of three to five stocks. I'm gonna sort it by most volatile and most liquid first at the top. And I'm gonna try to find opportunities on those stocks first. All right, number two, for my actual entries, I'm going to be buying break of resistance since this is a breakout strategy. The break of resistance has to have high volume, and I'm supposed to use RSI to avoid uh, trades when the RSI is above 70. I don't typically use RSI in my trading, but uh, we'll use it for this challenge. In terms of risk, I'm going to take positions that risk not more than 2% of my account in any one trade, which means starting with $1,000, I'm risking 20 bucks. I'm gonna use live stop orders when possible. Not, I can't use them pre-market, but during regular trading hours. And my daily max loss is 6%, which is $60 on day one with 1,000 bucks. Now, this is not an AI strategy that I could automate to a trading algorithm. Buying a break of resistance is not a very clear uh, signal. Buying a moving average crossover or buying when RSI crosses over a certain number, numerical, that would be easier to program. But this is a AI strategy that really is going to require the trader to do the executing of the strategy, but I'm gonna follow the rules that have been given to me and let's see how I'm able to grow this account using the AI breakout strategy. So as I sat down for day one, I knew that I was looking for the stock with the most volatility that was also the most liquid. And it had to be a stock that I could afford to buy given my account only has a thousand bucks. QNRX hit my scanners and was actually the leading percentage gainer in the market at 101%. This has had a huge move. Now, there was a second leading gainer, but it was a 94 cent stock. And although you could say it's cheaper, uh, because certainly it is, this one actually had more volume, which meant it had more liquidity. So I focused on the obvious one. And this one also, to note, had a float of 600,000 shares. This is an important relationship. So you've got 6 million shares of volume, but a 900,000 share float versus 1.5 million shares of volume and an 11, an 11 million share float. What you have between these two different stocks is actually a much more significant difference than I think some traders would, uh, would realize. So I'm going to describe in a bit more detail how this works. So we've got our float on the left here, and then we've got our characteristics of demand on the right. So when we have a stock that has high demand, it usually ha is, is triggered by news, and usually the stock is gonna be up 10% uh, or higher. It's usually got high relative volume. Now the relative volume on QNRX is 14,000 times higher than normal. That is a huge number. The relative volume on YGMZ is only 528. Not to say that that's not big, because it is, but this is obviously significantly larger. Relative volume tells us how much more volume the stock has today versus what is normal for that stock. And when a stock has like way above average volume, that's when we usually see the biggest moves. And not just going from, you know, 50% to 100%, but maybe from 100 to 200, 400 or 800% or higher. So these are stocks I really get excited about. Now, when we think about the relationship between demand and float, the more demand you have, the bigger the imbalance will be when you have a small float. So if you have a float of 1 million shares and you have, you know, 1 million shares of volume, uh, let's just say, for instance, and the stock goes up 100 percent, if you had a 10 million share float and you had the same 1 million shares of volume, I would wager that the stock might only go up a tenth of that. It might only go up 10% because that's how the shift has occurred because there's 10 times more supply. Same amount of demand, 
but less but more supply. So when we look at YGMZ, YGMZ has more supply and it also happens to have less volume. Now there are times like for instance, the case of AIMD where you have 8 million shares of volume and a 1 million share float. So that you could say that the demand imbalance could be even higher on this one at the moment than on QNRX, but the relative volume ratio is higher on QNRX. And that just speaks to the way these stocks have been trading in the last few weeks. And QNRX is the more obvious stock to trade because it is the leading percentage gainer. Okay, so QNRX was easy to select as the most obvious stock to apply the strategy to. Uh, it then hits my high of day momentum scanner and it squeezes up. It first hits the scanner at 8.04 a.m. And that was when the price was at $4.75. Even at this time with light volume, it still had relative volume of 134, which is really strong. It was up 71%. In the next three minutes, it goes up 133%, which is incredible. So 475, 5, 523, 525, 567, 630, 634, 647. Holy smokes, and volume is coming in. So I actually traded this in my big account and locked up $6,000 of profit in those first 12 minutes. This was a phenomenal trade. But that first move, there wasn't really a break of resistance. The stock was pretty much just squeezing higher. So... I didn't feel like it made sense to trade it in the small account at that time because there hadn't an obvious level of resistance hadn't quite formed yet. So I was focusing on trading it in my big account and then I was waiting for it to hold up and give me that opportunity to take a trade on a break of resistance. And this was the trade right here that I ended up taking in the small account. So, you know, as it turns out, the biggest move was right here. And this was really on response from the breaking news that came out at the top of the hour at 8 a.m. News comes out and the stock rips and squeezes up. It then pulls back holds and I was looking for that second leg higher. And it's just unfortunate in this case that the stock didn't squeeze all the way back up to 750 and, and make new highs. But nonetheless, it did move up enough for me to book some profit. So I really can't complain. So day one is in the books, $140. Is that the biggest day one I've ever had of a small account challenge? No, but it's not bad. It's respectable. A 14% gain, that's pretty solid. So I felt pretty good at the end of day one, going into day two, that this strategy that had been given to me was going to work. My biggest challenge was the feeling that I still had too much discretion and I really wanted just to let AI run this whole thing for me, but that just wasn't feasible with the account and the broker that I'm using. So, uh, you know, uh, to be honest, I, I think even though AI controlled the strategy, I'm still the operator who's pressing the buttons and it's still requiring my intuition. We're gonna see that come into play more in day two. So let's go ahead and start with my first trade of day two. So we're on day two, and on my first trade, I lost $7.78. Basically a break-even trade. I took a breakout setup, and I'm going to draw this yellow arrow so you can see where I bought. I bought right here for the break through this flat top. This is the AI breakout strategy. The RSI was below 70. So everything checked out on this. This was, at the time, the most obvious stock to trade. And you can see that it popped up, but it didn't hold. Also, even though I wanted to get in at $7.69, I got filled at $7.77. That's called slippage. The difference between where you want to be in at and where you actually get filled at. And this is actually one of the biggest problems with doing back testing. When you do back testing against a strategy, it's really hard to know in reality how many shares you would have filled. Because when you back test, you're saying, okay, well, at this exact time, my alert would have triggered me to buy the stock. And so you look at the price at that exact time, and then you just figure I would have gotten in at that price. You could give yourself some slippage. You could say, well, maybe I got in at that price plus 10 cents, a little bit higher, as was the case here. But sometimes even that is not realistic. And this was the biggest problem that I had with trying to do back testing was that the back test results would look great, but then when I would run that algorithm moving forward, the results were completely different. It was almost as if I solved the puzzle of the algorithm to fit 
the historical data that I was back testing against. So I could create an algorithm that made a lot of money based on this set of historical data. But then with a new set of data moving forward, that same algorithm didn't perform well. And the, one of the biggest differences was because of slippage. The difference between getting in at $7.67 versus getting in at $7.77 in this case was the difference between an $80 winner and a $7 loser. Now, a $7 loser is not a big deal, but I did feel a little disappointed because I broke the ice with that first trade and it was a loser. So in addition to having a $7.78 loss on the first trade, when I logged in this morning, my equity balance was $1,129.35, which means my fees and commissions from the one trade I took yesterday was about $11. All right, not the end of the world. It's not that big of a deal, but you know, fees and commissions do add up. And that's the price you pay for this type of broker. So for those that are not familiar, the broker that I chose for my small account challenge is an offshore broker. It's an international broker. And the reason is because they do not enforce the $25,000 PDT minimum. For me, when I've tried trading using cash only accounts with a US broker, the fact is I'm, I'm greatly limited to how frequently I can trade. I run out of cash and then I can't take any more trades. So what I decided to do for this small account challenge is use an international broker that will allow me to trade as much as I'd like. But the trade-off is that I'm paying a fee and a commission. Now, if we jump onto the whiteboard real quick, the broker that I'm using offers six times leverage. And I don't, I'm not an affiliate, so I'm not even gonna share the name of the broker. So use it if you'd like, don't use it if you don't want. Uh, you guys can talk about it in the comments. But that means with a $1,000 deposit times six, I actually can use up to $6,000 in max buying power, which means if I find a stock price to $6 a share, I could buy 1,000 shares, which would equal a $6,000 total position. And if the stock goes up 10% and I sell it at 660, well, I, my account's up 60% right? 10% return on the underlying asset, but I'm using six times leverage, so I'm getting a 60% return. Now, I don't have to tell you that leverage is a sword that whoosh, whoosh, cuts both ways. You can absolutely lose 60% of your account in one day using leverage. So you have to be incredibly responsible. One of the things that this AI strategy dictates is tight risk management. So I really can't take a lot of risk, but that's all right. So with this first trade, losing $7.78, really not a big deal, totally within my risk parameters, and I'm, I feel okay with that. Trade number two of day two is a winner. It's about a $21 winner. All right, so again, nothing that's really moving the needle in a big way. I bought this stock, uh, 350 shares at 796, added at, seven, at 808, and then sold at 805. You can see at the yellow arrow where I entered, I was looking for a breakout. This is the AI breakout strategy. RSI was not over 70. Looking for that curl and that move up to 820, 830, 840, 50. But it just sort of stalled out. So I would more or less call the first two trades of day two to be break-even trades. A $7 loser, a $21 winner. Uh, these, these aren't gonna grow the account very quickly. So let's jump into trade number three. Okay, so still watching AISP. Stock is up 65%. It is moving. It's the stock that's in focus. It has just broken through this resistance level. So now what I'm looking for, is it going to hold this level? And if it does, can I take a breakout up to 850, 875, and then $9 a share? Obviously, back of mind target, that's what I'd love to see. So the entry right here is at 851, 765 shares. This is a breakout strategy, looking for the squeeze through the high of day. There's 866, 863, 863 on the offer, 866, 868, 868 on the offer, 866 on the bid, 865 on the bid. Now there's 870, 871. Back to 865. Holding 192 shares took a little off the table at 869 and 865. Trying to manage risk, lock up small winners. Now I'm up $108, realized, and still holding 192 shares. It pops up, I sell the rest, locking up now, total on the day, $116.40. Now let's go ahead and jump into trade number four. 
Meds popped up on the scanner. It's priced at about $13 a share. It's up 54% and it has a float of less than 500,000 shares. This is a stock that was moving very quickly. I jumped in and on my first trade, I took a small loss. On my second trade, I have a small profit. I'm up $12 on it. Again, this doesn't really move the needle, but now I'm up $128.40 on the day. On the next trade, I take a $2.50 loss on APM. Very quick entry and exit. It at this time is the second leading gainer in the market, up 186%. It was the right stock to trade, but I didn't get a, a good win on it. And then I got one more trade on AISP, buying at $8.70 for the breakout. This is uh, as it was squeezing through the high and selling at $8.81. Now I'm up $169.90 on the day. In the final trade of the day, I take one more position on AISP and lock up $56 of profit on it, bringing my total on the day to $225.90. This was a really solid day. Now, this AI strategy didn't specifically dictate a maximum number of trades I could take. I had a maximum drawdown. I had a daily goal, which I exceeded, but I, I wasn't really limited in how frequently I could trade. Typically, when I do a small account, challenge you, you following my own strategy i only take one trade a day i try to get in get green and get out and for me i do that because i know the more trades i take the more i'm exposing myself to the risk of catching an unnecessary loss a flush and get going into a drawdown and when your account is so small you don't have any cushion whatsoever to make those kinds of mistakes so that makes it even more important that your quality standard of being willing to take a trade is super high but this AI strategy didn't really call for that. It was uh, a bit more open-ended. And I think by now you can also see the fact that this AI strategy gave me some guidelines, but I don't, don't fool yourself into thinking that anyone could have picked up that AI strategy from ChatGPT and made $215 or whatever it is on day one of a small account challenge. That's just not realistic. It, it wouldn't have happened like that. Because the fact is, this strategy still required me as the trader to be very actively involved with executing, getting in, getting out, choosing the stocks. Now, I was using the parameters given to me by OpenAI and ChatGPT, which was great, but they were just too vague. Now, are there some algorithmic trading bots that are sold out there that you could trade with your own money? Yes, there are, but I would look at them very skeptically. And here's the thing. If you've made an AI bot and it's printing money, you're not going to share it with other people because these types of things are so elusive. The market is always changing. It'll work for a little while and then it'll stop working. You have to change it. You have to adapt it. That's why these big high frequency trading firms employ the best mathematicians in the world to work on these money printing machines. Now, a lot of people are sort of cynical about this and say, you know, the best minds of our generation are being squandered by just trying to make money in the stock market. And they could be doing things like trying to, I don't know, do something, you know, like make it so men don't lose their hair when they start getting older, something that matters to people. But nonetheless, um, this is the world that we live in. So if you're thinking about oh, I really want to trade and I want to just have an AI bot that does it for me. There will people, there are people that will sell you that dream, but it is not reality. I have not once in my entire career of being a full-time trader seen something available to retail traders that's consistently profitable over the long term. Maybe someone will prove me wrong, but as of right now, I just haven't seen it. I think that what is available from OpenAI and ChatGPT is a lot of really great general guidelines about trading, similar to what you find here on YouTube. But when it comes to being an expert and being able to actually execute on, on any of that general knowledge, you need to develop a skill set. So the process of turning that knowledge into an actual skill is done through practice. Now, I'm a very hands-on learner. I learn by setting up my account starting to press the buttons and just getting myself in there. That's why I never went to any, uh, you know, like trading, day trading school or any academy or anything like that that would have trained me. I learned all on my own. Now, that's the school of hard knocks. It's not always the best path because you end up making a lot of rookie mistakes that 
people who came before you could have easily told you about if you had been surrounded with, you know, by them in an academic setting or in a community like what we have now at Warrior Trading. So my hope is that I'm able to send the ladder back down to make it easier for beginner traders to gain the financial literacy needed just to have like their prere prerequisite level in order to start trading day one sim. There's no guarantee that you'll be profitable. And I know you, everyone wants a guarantee. Nobody wants to take a risk. Everyone wants a, a sure thing. And it's not like that. It's not like that in life. And it's not like that in trading. Even if you try to find one of these AI bots, it's not gonna be like that there. So ultimately, I think the best thing you can do is gain the skill of learning how to read the financial markets, learning how to read stock charts, learning how to understand which stocks have the potential to make big moves, learning to understand human behavior, because human behavior is what moves the markets. When you think of stocks like Nvidia and Tesla that have made these incredible moves, those are driven by human behavior. So if you become an expert, at psychology, an expert at FOMO, the fear of missing out, an expert at greed, an expert at understanding the type of stocks that under the right circumstances can make 20, 30, 50, 100%, 200%, 500%, 800% moves in one single day. That's when you can start converting all of that knowledge into some actual tangible profit. I do think that AI can be a tool that'll help you in that journey but it will not at this time replace the human intuition that is required to truly profit in a meaningful way from the stock market. So now that you know about the AI strategy, if you wanna learn about my small account strategy, the one that I've used every single time I've done a small account, I will put a link pinned to the top of the description and in the comments where you can download the PDF of my small account strategy. That will outline how I choose the strongest stocks each day, where I buy and sell in order to minimize my risk and maximize my upside potential. I encourage you to download it, print it out, study it, and start practicing it in a simulator in a safe environment. Because as always, I'll remind you, trading is risky. My results aren't typical. So manage your risk, take it slow, practice in a simulator because the stock market, it's gonna be here for you. Spend your time right now studying and honing those skills. If you enjoyed this episode, I hope you hit that thumbs up. I hope you subscribe and help me reset that account back to a thousand bucks.